We're going to call the meeting to order 645. Uh, our meeting is currently being recorded by Norton Media. Is anyone else recording the meeting? Please identify yourselves. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. Flag one up. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, and to his love, with liberty, justice for all. All right. Uh, has everyone had a chance to read the minutes from the February 26th meeting? Yes. Any questions, comments? I take a motion to approve the meetings February 6th, 26th. So, so it's Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. What's it on? Warrants, Mrs. Cohen. I have reviewed and approved warrants that were presented to me at the February 26th school committee meeting. The total amount approved was $658,059.01. I wish to enter this into the public record. Thank you. Any questions? Student representatives. Gentlemen. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, the high school is planning um, to participate in the National School Walkout on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Also, Julia Palin and Bella Petrosevich represented Norton and Massachusetts um, this past weekend at the National Track and Field Meet in New York City. Also, the National Honor Society is holding its annual Senior Senior Prom this Wednesday after school the weather allows it. Um, also, Noel Fathia, the Math Honor Society, is holding its annual Pi Day event this Wednesday. Um, also, the Science Honor Society is visiting the LGM this Friday to give a lesson to third graders on tornadoes and do a little interactive activity. On March 7th, um, our best buddies group um, sponsored the Spread the Word to End the Word campaign, which is an educational campaign to educate people with the harmful effects of using the R word. So some of our students created a video and at lunches we had students sign a banner um, taking a pledge to not use that word. On the 21st, we'll also be sponsoring a Down Syndrome Awareness Day. And I think it's usually like a crazy soft day or whatever um, to spread awareness for that. And then this past weekend, we had about 25 students um, compete at the Jacket State competition in which six Place in the top ten, and three of us will be going to the international competition. Or three of us qualified for the international competition in Atlanta. And we'll be taking three more students um, for the academies. And there was some sort of special one. Right? Right? Anyone else want that for me? Sure. <laughs> um, I placed first. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so I have to just say, uh, the campaign that you did, I'm so glad that Dr. Bayada emailed us privately that link because I watched it and cried like a baby. It was awesome what you guys did. I'm proud of you and everyone else that was involved. It was awesome. Nice job. And I text your mother. <laughs> I do think it, 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 you know, it's one of those things where you sit as the superintendent and I'm not, I'm not their principal, but you sit and you watch what these kids are doing to make sure that kids feel, as per our prior discussions, that kids feel wanted, they feel that right. they're part of included. the culture, included in the culture, and I think it doesn't come from anybody better than the, the teenagers that are involved with students, it really doesn't. Uh, we can talk about it as adults until we're whatever, and it's never going to be as meaningful as a peer. Uh, and kudos to, um, their level. to mm -hmm. yeah, and, and kudos to uh, Bobby, not only you, and I know all your peers you're working with, but I know you're spending a lot of time in making this happen and making kicking it up to the next level and, and uh, um, some people uh, might say it's a lot of work I think you say it's just something that you believe in so thank you for doing it appreciate it okay any other questions all right moving on to our high school senior class trip thank you very much. Hi. Um, my name is Rachel Pilot and I am one of the class of 2018 and we would like to, <laughs> to take the seniors to Canopy Lake Park this year um, just to give them some more options, give them a different 
feel. I know math department needs to take some six flags, so we're looking for something a little bit different. It's actually about 20 minutes closer, I think, but out of state, so. So the trip is to New Hampshire, and so that requires school committee approval uh, because of liability and everything else that goes. So I'm recommending that we move it to um, to uh, Canby Lake Park in uh, New Hampshire for the class of 2018's uh, class trip. Mm -hmm. And that's on May 31st. Any questions? All right, motion to approve the field trip to Canby Lake in New Hampshire. Approved. Second. Second. All's in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on to the next agenda item, student academic support. So item. briefly, I, I'm going to table this item, um, but I just want to let you know that I am working on a um, plan through a group of teachers and Jen's office on how to change our programming um, in, in to, to upfront needs for students um, in K-3. to So just a big picture item, it does require expenditure, and of course you know what expenditure I would be looking to utilize which would be school choice funds um, and a proactive way just like we've done with technology. So I'll bring that to the uh, to the next meeting as well. Thank you. Right. Continuing on, um, school choice we're talking about. Yeah, so you, you would ask for a couple of pieces of information. One of them was emailed to you earlier yeah. in terms of the line items expenditures. I really do think it's interesting to note that um, the school choice funds since FY15 um, have brought in $1,087,009. Um, we've expended 854 plus. We have encumbered money that's not on here yet. Um, but as you see from the line items, these are anything from uh, one-time purchases of books, professional development, uh, full-day kindergarten teachers cost, technology cost. Um, I'm trying to think, um, and some of the you have the line item in front of you. Uh, we we wouldn't have. $854,000 in the last four fiscal years of this stuff if it wasn't for these funds. And I think it's really important to recognize uh, that comes from on the second sheet that you have in the original packet, which is uh, June of 15, we had 13 school choice students. June of 16, we had 41. June of 17, we had 55. And as of March of 18 this year, we have 90 students uh, in our school choice program. And as you can see, the communities have actually grown including some communities that maybe you wouldn't expect. Some of that has to do with faculty members. And when they live, you, you actually you have a couple of like- That was my question. Some of these yeah. are kind of far away. Yeah. yeah. That's faculty. Yeah, so, yeah. you know- As much as I love my kids, a 40 minute ride to Weymouth wouldn't be happening. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, that's, and that has to do with faculty members who have chosen to, to bring under the school choice program like I have and others, um, their, their children um, to the district. So we're at 90 and um, the applications are, are already coming in. When we voted um, in the more kindergarten numbers, what is that? What is that total for open seat or uh, for available? We, we 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 voted it. I think it was at. I think it was 15 for next year. But again, we've also had some discussions about that 15 and what that would mean to class size, and that's the one thing we're going to keep an eye on. So, what would our we, total school choice seats be? Uh, it would be, uh, if I remember correctly, it's uh, in terms of the original vote. We said kindergarten and grade one at 15. Grades two through five at ten, and grades six through ten no cap for the incoming. So it's seventy with within the cap, and then six through ten no cap. So there's a potential for seventy more students to come, or more. Um, so that's that's how we're looking looking at it. And our enrollment right now in kindergarten is just because of births is pretty low. So we're keeping an eye on that and what that means for class sizes um, and the impact on that. How do you advertise this? How are families from, I mean, I know you said some of them are staff members, but um, you know, if we just look at Dyke and Rehoboth, the six, is that you know all staff? So are it, you no, it's a combination. Or? It's a combination. We advertise in local newspapers as well as online, okay. social media, um, in terms of everything from Twitter account, Facebook account. Um, you know, it's a catch-22 because what I'm doing is I'm saying that we're as competitive as anyone else, we believe. 
uh, number one. But number two, remember that I'm also taking students from another district in the same way that students take students from us. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, you know, you try to be professional. You know, I don't have a TV ad out there yet. Um, you know, I don't have a bus in downtown somewhere yet. Because uh, I, I really feel we have a great product. And I mean, there's no more great product than being the superintendent who decides to send their own child to that district. So I'll leave it at that. I also think we have a lot of choice families that use it, that are already enrolled and really going and telling their, their friends mm -hmm. what a great experience they've had. So the word of mouth has really helped as well. I think it's really, really, <laughs> I think it's, you know, we have some naysayers, both internally and externally, about school choice. And so, you know, one of my things is what would happen to one-to-one -one technology right now in our district in 4 through 10? It, it wouldn't be happening. It would not be there. What would happen to some of our reading series that we have in classrooms? They would not be there. Full day K. Uh, full day K would not be here. Um, so to the naysayers, I say, you know, I guess job security must be a nice thing. Um, but besides that, there, there really isn't. Well, there's going to be something right to it because so many districts are kind of jumping on the bandwagon. Every district around us right. is now voting school choice so, or um, considering voting school choice. Maybe for all of those naysayers, you can have them go to any other district and see what they're doing because right. I think we're kind of lucky that we were ahead of the curve and right. that we do have a great product. Right. It's important. Do you have any idea if we have school choice students going to vote? Sure, we have, I, uh, I don't have the number in front of me, but yeah, we have, yeah. And, and I think what's important, you just said something, we've always had school choice kids going out. Yeah. We're now, at minimum, bringing in the revenue that at minimum, not only equals that, but adds to that. It's way above. We have more, we have, except for the charter, but we know that that's under a whole different financial formula and a whole different process. This year we're sending 17, last year was 15.4, year before that was 19. Goes all the way back to middle of the year. Oh. Transition. Oh. Yeah. They program. Oh. So they program. Like so so we have <laughs> <laughs> They just well, get that. They just get on the head on the, on the monitor. <laughs> so we, we we think that it's the the right approach. We think we have to keep an eye on it with class sizes. Um, you know. We, we think that there are areas where we can improve the way that we are uh, providing it. I mean, I've had some general discussions with you about when is the right time to hire a teacher because the class size becomes too much and we don't want to place a burden um, on that. Um, but I, I think the discussion on class size also comes down to, you know, what is the right class size? Um, I think sometimes around me I hear things like anything higher than 18 or 20. So we're at 24 while schools around us are 28 to 30. And I'm hearing, you know, people worried about that. I'm worried too because of the type of student that are needing these SEL supports, which are our general K-12 population, not our school choice kids that are coming in. That doesn't mean we don't have a school choice child that's not our IEP. Um, and the other part of it becomes, what, why are parents choosing, and we have yet to survey our parents in school choice. We're about to be doing that in the near future and saying, why Norton? Because you have so many other options. Why did you choose us? Are you happy with us? What are we not doing? Um, in the same way that we've asked our regular parents that information. And we'll do that, you know, I'm just not going to do choice. I'm just going to make sure that our choice parents' information is collected separately from uh, K-12. This is a rehash of something I said before, but so the, the uh, class size issue, there's actually two ways to look at it, right? You can look at it from the standpoint of, well, we don't want to get the class too big, or you can look at it from the standpoint of, well, if the class is getting to a certain size, what we actually want to do now is push for as many kids as we can for that grade. Because we, we want to grow it so we can right. bump into a new teacher. Right. So I would encourage you to do that because it's still, yeah. I hate to say it's break but it's still tough. In nine, in nine students, basically, nine, ten students in one grade really allows for us to have a discussion to say instead of having 25 kids in every class, we can now have 19 kids in every class. And our kids get the benefit. And by our kids, I mean all of our kids, both the child who's choicing in and the child who is born and bred in Norton. Yeah. Probably um, there is now you're not getting around to further things like the seven Correct. So, you, so, right. correct. so, so, so the, the question becomes, one of the things that we've done a decent job of is trying to get rid of the one-time purchases as much as possible. Sometimes what happens is because of enrollment, we need a new this or we need a new that. But in general, in this area, except for cities, if you're a suburb, you're looking at flatlining your enrollment for the next decade or going down. So, you know, that's the reason why it's such a competitor. You also have to remember that we now have 
families born into the charter movement, into the choice movement. You know, choice before was you go to the vote or the ad year, you go to the private school. That was, you couldn't choice in between districts. Um, so now you can't. Um, so the question becomes how, how aggressive are we being, if you will, or how clear are we being? I mean, we don't have the, a glossy like our competitors, some of our competitors do in the charter school, the Vogue school, the Aggie school, and so on. Maybe that's something we should look, about, uh, look upon. We've talked about marketing and public relations. Uh, we just don't have the time to do it. We do snippets of it, but think about what this would look like if we were truly, really doing an advertising push. It'd look a little differently. Any other questions? We'll be on uh, the athletic blue stream information. For your information only, not for the purposes of trying to make any decisions going forward, we did in fact ask the boosters for options of what they would like. And basically what you have is um, one program, hockey, whose option, well, let me rephrase this. There are three options. Option number one, a booster. The current funds that the boost each of the boosters has in the line item would be would stay in that line item until it ran out, and then all funds would be in one line item, all sports together. Second option is one booster with one governing body, but individual line items. This is very much like the presentation that we had from Old Rochester, except that there would be kind of a, if you will, a charge back into uh, the line items that would go under the big one, and then our our, our uh, big one booster would be doing like the major fundraiser and then the boosters would be doing their individual fundraising. We'd have to define that. And then option three is keep it as it is, but provide school, school committee with uh, non for profit status, um, which is what we've told them they have to have by June 30th. So the breakdown that you have is, um, you can read it one of two ways. One program, hockey, has said they prefer option one, but they would be um, willing to um, also go with option two. So what I did is I split that as a vote. So really option one, you have two and a half votes. Option two, you have seven and a half votes. And option three, you have five. Or you can read it as three, seven, five, one way or the other. I split the hockey either as going half in each way, or you can say it's three for number one. So those are people who want one booster. That would be currently girls volleyball, um, uh, girls soccer, and hockey. And then option two, you have seven which would be winter track boys and girls, spring track boys and girls, cross country boys and girls, boys soccer, boys and girls lacrosse, and golf and gymnastics. And then option three, um, you have first and 10 foundation for football, um, you have softball, and you have uh, cheering and wrestling. So I guess I missed one, that's four. That's ball. Sorry, take that back, I must have counted one twice. one twice because that's only four right one two three four take Where that back um, There's no baseball. Uh, yeah, right. if, if 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 it's not here I didn't receive the information that's the ball simple okay uh, and I, I think I've done enough asking. So, so they've done nothing with what we've asked them to do. I, I don't know that to be true all I know it's not reported here so that means I don't have an answer what's our what's our deadline for the uh, for being nonprofit uh, June 30th of this year of this year yeah so, um, Will the so, decision be made at that point? Um, well, what's happening now is that some of the groups are saying, you know, I, I'm filing for my status because I'm not sure where we're going, or should I file for my status because I'm still waiting to hear. I think they're looking for a little bit of a direction in terms of what do we want to do next. Um, and I know that some of you had some thoughts of this because we've talked. Um, I think the, the, the biggest issue here is that you're split. Mm -hmm. You know, option two looks like it has the most, but then you still have mm -hmm. seven other groups that are saying no and potentially um, others that haven't even come in. Um, How do you have seven other groups that say no? Well, you have, you have, you know, I, I talked well, about three and three. four, so th oh. three and one, four and three is seven, plus seven that's chosen two. Well, so three, the three are okay with the one booster. Right. Right. All together. So I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't count them as a no. I think right. They're, they're an all in, just want to go to one booster. Right. So the right. two programs that are highly, you know, if you will, stuck to option three is wrestling and first and ten foundation That's which probably as separate organizations probably next to hockey are one two and three in fundraising um hockey because at one point it had to fully fund it mm -hmm. now it has other responsibilities but football and and wrestling wrestling is i mean i don't know if any of you have gone to a wrestling meet it's a life it's a lifelong affair the entire day it's an eight hour day because it's quads and tries and all that stuff 
And so they make their food at, with having a, a great presentation of food and product and stuff that they can sell to all the other kids and parents that show up for that first day event. So clearly I can understand why they said three. I, same thing with football. You know, very clear cut. It's a foundation that's been around for probably the longest of them all. Um, so the question becomes, how do we, you know, how do we move forward? I'm not asking for an answer tonight. I, I just think we need to have this in our brain. So how, how do you move, move forward, forward when there are sort of potentially three, two, three, or four programs, maybe one that we can think of off the top of our head that's not even listed here? Mm -hmm. How do we move forward and kind of just leave them out and then the rest kind of come? It just feels... Well, it, you know... There, is, uh, there are ideas that we can present to them and say, let's start here, plan A, B, and C, if you will. Okay. I, think, I think the issue here is, is you may have to come to the situation of playing hardball, where you say, no, this is the way we're going to be doing it going forward. Um, the other part of it is that you do have parents very involved now in middle school sports that aren't yet at the high school. You know, and wh what are their thinking about this process? You know, do they think a governing body of one, one is better than multiple. Um, everybody wants to fundraise and make sure that the money goes back to that group. I get that. Um, but clearly we heard from organizations from other towns, Hull IE, that that's not the way they do it. Uh, they're working together as a group and not individually. And as we know, that's been a constant theme that I've had an issue with, which is that, you know, all for one and nothing for anyone is, is not something all that... All for one and one for me. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's and not, again, I'm not trying to be negative because they do almost everything that we, they can to make sure that the kids are getting what they need and maybe even some beyond that. But I do think that some, at minimum, if this doesn't go anywhere, then we're saying, I'm sorry, you have to be registered. You cannot use our name. You cannot use our, 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 you know, our buildings uh, for your own this and that. I think then the second part is do we take a, a look at saying, well, you know what, that's fine. You all want to be independent, you're all registered enough for profits, but we're still going to have some type of an organized booster that is, is going to be tackling big businesses and the businesses that potentially could. Um, I just recently um, proposed to a local business um, a request for an amount of money um, to offset uh, not increasing um, fees going forward for sports. Their amount of money that they would donate, would, my request was $40,000 so that the fees would not go up. Um, and you know, that, that's what the money would be earmarked to, to take care of the fees. I think a lot of people like that idea. Um, I would like to go beyond that and say, how do we scale back some of these fees? Because 350 is a hefty fee. Um, and is we can't- Is your suggestion that if you do like, <clears throat> if you do kind of target these larger organizations that a sort of booster group then couldn't? What, what I'm suggesting is that that's a potential idea. Yeah, that we would go back to the idea that fundraising as a sports booster is about the team getting together and having so a power. Actually, what we may find is that these groups who stay independent may not be as successful moving forward as they have been. My definition won't be. Right. I, I'm, I'm still, I'm not following the threes on the logic, to be honest with you. I don't understand what the logic is on it. I think it's, the logic is control. And, I, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm well, being anti. It's just I think that's what it is. We raise this amount of money. We spend a yeah. lot of time doing that. Yeah, my we spend the long days doing it, so therefore it should be ours. Well so my rebuttal, to that is, my rebuttal to that is that under option two, you will still do exactly mm -hmm. that. You will control all your money except for the small piece that you put into the main booster. That piece will go back to... Uh, either deferring or, or mitigating uh, raises in fees or decreasing the fees of your own athletes. So it's all, all of your money is basically going back in there. And then you will be able to take advantage of larger corporate dollars. It's your, your option is to have, let's say you raise 50,000 and the main booster raises whatever, 250,000. So you can have your 50,000 and a piece of 250, or you can have just your 50. Just 50 is less. There is no map out the argument that is not. I, I don't understand the logic. Yeah, I, I think I think a couple of different things that are, that are concerning. And, and in fact, I'm sorry, I don't mean sure. to interrupt you, but one other thing is is the idea of the control. I mean, I, I thought we were fairly clear that you will not remain an, an independent booster. Things are going to have to go through the front office now. You can't just go out and say, well, we're going to do this with our money, and that's that. It has to come through the front office and has to get approved. I. I, I 
I'm not sure that everybody understands what what's transpiring here. Right. I, I think that the, the issue that has uh, been my stickling point with the boosters has been, what are we fundraising for? That's going to continue to be my question. If we're fundraising for the purposes of a banquet and all of that, I understand that, right? I, I get it. There's bills to be paid, food to be purchased, awards to be provided. But there's other things that take place that I'm not sure should be. I've, I mentioned the, the issue of the scholarships that I have concern with because I believe that when you're going to raise money that's going to potentially go to these student athletes only within your sport, I think you clearly have to articulate that to the people you're fundraising from. That's number one. Number two, I think you have to be an absolute registered non-for-profit because the number one question we get at my office is, is this group for real? Is this, is this something that you know I can be supporting? Now, most of this is relationships that I don't have with people. It's a booster parent who knows the, uh, knows the owner. But at some point, what should fundraising be about? Is it about team and let's go, let's fundraise for this because we all need new nets? Or is it about we're going to give out scholarship money? And, and I have some, you know, some real thoughts that that's not the way we should be doing business. Um, the second part becomes what are the priorities of what we purchase? You know, I'm a stickler for if you're going to fundraise and you're offsetting the cost of the sport, whatever that is, is it for the needs and necessity of the 36 players on the soccer team, JV and varsity, or is it for the needs of only the varsity is getting the blame? And uh, we, you know, only, we're, we're all fundraising so that, so that X can get. I think those are things that have to be clearly articulated. What are we purchasing? Yeah. I mean, we, we, I've gotten into more trouble and, and gotten some really angry people with me since I've been here about why does it seem that this sport always gets new uniforms every three years while I've expended zero in my operating budget for that sport. But yet, perception-wise, it looks like I'm the one who's purchasing, and by me, I mean the district, is purchasing that uniform. No, it's that booster group who went out and said, here's seven grand for that uniform that everybody's going to get, versus football helmets that I feel I have a direct responsibility to deal with because it is a safety protocol in terms of concussion protocols and so on and so forth. They can't just be any, anything off the... So we have to... We get it because I think we're wasting money. And by wasting, I don't mean that the money is bad money. I mean we could potentially do better. For example, I'm charging the boosters a custodial cost to use the cafeteria. So I'm hurting the very people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna charge them $350 for, for a custodian for a few hours so, so for the same money that they're out there fundraising because we need it for the sport. That makes no sense to me. This is the same discussion, by the way, we've had with National Law Society <coughs> and fees and all that stuff. So I proposed something to Gerald and, and Sherry and if I have the exact details of what I propose, right. forgive me, but essentially it was that we would go to option two, but do it on a staggered basis. So in other words, uh, I think next year would have been kind of the, the freebie year. You can join it next year. Uh, and then after that, if you're not part of it, you have to go a full year not enjoying the benefits of it. Uh, to, to explain it, so if, if next year, let's say uh, softball, just picking people randomly. Softball says we're going to go into it, and boys soccer says we're not. Okay, so softball is in it, boys soccer is not. Then after that, boys soccer does not have to be part of it. They don't have to. They don't have to enjoy any extra money. They can enjoy only the, the small amount they can raise, and not the large amount that we raise. After that, if they want to join it, they have to have a one-year moratorium on being able to use any of the money that comes out of that. In other words, you can't come in and say, "Hey, those guys, you know, Bob Kraft is putting in the soccer field for these guys. We want to be part of that." Well, you can't be. Sorry, not for a year. You can't. You can't ride our coattails. So, it it basically incentivizes people to to join the one booster with, like the, you know, I don't want to call it mini boosters underneath it, but but with people still having some modicum of control of their own money as well, and it punishes people who say, "Well, we're not going to do that until." we see the success and then we want to jump on the success. So well, I, I know that the cheer that somebody came to me from cheer and what their concern is is that they are a small group and they raise money and they're barely making it. So they're they're in their minds they're thinking, well if the other big one that everybody talks about doesn't happen because it's not a guarantee. Now we're still busting and we're trying to make this money and we still have to give a, a portion when we're barely making it. But so the portion goes right back to them. 
the portion goes back to them. Yeah, but that, not from what they said. They don't, they they don't understand, understand it. They don't understand, understand it correctly. Understand it goes right back to them. That's, okay. that's why the I don't understand the logic. The portion that they're putting in goes back it. to them, to yeah. that specific group. So that's why I don't think they're. Well, I thought what they said no, there is in the a percentage was there's a percentage yes. that went they, to the large they, booster. They pay that percentage to the large booster. Large booster. But then under under the scenario, the large booster would pay them back pro rata to mitigate the fees. So it's everybody everybody has to pay what fifteen percent. The whole idea like of the big booster has been two parts. The first part is if we can collectively collectively take. 29 or whatever it is sports and have one group we should be able to fund six figures in athletics within making making connections to all the different community sponsors and outside of the community sponsors that could potentially want to give to something like that so that's one the second part is how do we prioritize making sure that those funds are earmarked to make sure that fees for students are maintained or actually go down because you got to remember, fees every single year are going to go. Uh, excuse me, the cost of athletics every single year is going to go up three, four, five percent on a half million dollar budget, right? So you know you're you're you're, you're going to go up twenty thousand dollars, let's say, for the sake of argument, thirty thousand dollars or more every single year, and you're trying to say, well, okay, well, guess what? No more than three fifty because we're going to we're going to take this money from over here and offset that cost. And and the issue is that that's just not something folks seem to want to do. I don't understand that because in, in option two, the least you can possibly get is what you raise. Right. That's the least you can get. Right. By by definition, by math, that's the least you can get. Right. Uh, so I'm, your money is still yours. Yeah. But you're collectively also coming together for the purposes of, let's say we decide that we're going to do an athletic department golf tournament. Everybody participates. Should be easy to get the minimum 130 or whatever you need to do one of those and everybody's paying their money and that we're fundraising we're doing all that stuff that money goes right into the big pot of money yeah. right now if a team comes forward and they're fundraising their own stuff that they're doing and they want to use that money for x y and z they can still do that all we're saying is that there needs to be some type of pay-in to the booster because we're going to feed that money into all the stuff that we need which is starts with the number one issue fees being maintained and not increased or maybe even go the other way and also the equity of what each sport is doing yeah yeah it places you know tpc is a perfect example you folks used to have before i was here before chris modis was here or early on with the tpc the volunteers of all the athletic teams participating at the tpc i've heard great stories about everything now we have barely none participating or any i should say participating why well, it's the weekend, it takes time, it's a commitment, and they might only clear 1200 bucks for the entire weekend. Yeah, it wasn't worth the effort. Right, it wasn't worth the effort, is what I was told, exactly. It was just a lot of work to, to clear 1000 to $1,500. I think one group cleared one year two grand as the top prize. Okay, we get it, but there's also something about that fundraising that's important. Community, team building, working together as families working together, finding ways to do it, uh, ear marketing for a certain thing that you want. Everybody's going to get new soccer balls. Okay, great. It costs a thousand dollars. We got to raise a thousand dollars to get new soccer balls. We don't think of it that way, um, and we don't have any protocol for that, which is one of the things I definitely want to put in place with the athletic director and the principal. So, this is again not a deal today, just a discussion. Right. I think that's why, if you look at option two, you know, you have that one big booster who targets the businesses and maybe some really big fundraising events. And then the other booster, the you know the mini boosters, like you called it, they can do their car washes and, and whatever else they want to do. They're, they're not targeting the businesses. The businesses right. will be hit once. You know, it it, it just yeah, it, it boggles my mind too that I, I you're going to get more the, money. And I the think other that thing too is sorry, is we have 29 different organizations in one school. We have other things in other schools. I mean, as a small not me. But as a small business owner in this town, I have 35 people every year, as an estimate, asking me for money. Like, I would think, you know, so, so if I have 35 people and everybody gets 20 bucks, maybe one organization, maybe my check is a thousand bucks. Yeah, that's why the home plate fundraiser folder for friends of North Wrestling every day. And also, at the TPC at Boston, we got parents and members of the school, members of the teams volunteering at the food tent during the TPC at Boston right. for the golf tournament. Carolyn, did you have something? Well, I was just going to say, um, 
for years, Foxborough has been doing um, a sort of combined boosters for their parent organizations. Um, and I know Dr. Marty's, when he came, had sort of offered that as an option. And it is very overwhelming because you kind of have, from year to year, this is what I want, sort of, this is what we perceive the school to need. Um, and we, I don't really know where that conversation ever went because I'm not part of the parent organizations any longer, but um, I think that there was evidence that they would raise a lot of money doing one event every year. And that was all the parent organizations in Foxborough needed to do was one sort of gala and they um, would sort of split it up. So one year this school did it, the next year this school did it, the next year this school. So they didn't even have the pressure of every single year having to run this major fundraiser. Um, there's really clearly evidence that pulling together and working more collaboratively can have much better results. So. Yeah, I, mean, I think another thing too is, you know, if we're looking at this list, if you have 20 different other organizations under one, you can, like if you're doing, you know, you guys did the hoedown, that's a whole new set of people that Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Like it's just, people. I mean, right. you're still not, it's still not, it's the same amount of effort, but you've expanded right. your community that's right. going to attack. I mean, I... Yeah. So next steps, will, will we come back to have a further discussion and potentially a vote of the school committee? So can I just ask one last clarifying question? So the, the sports that are listed are the ones that responded, but if we, we know that there are sports that are missing, is that sort they of They can still respond, absolutely. I mean, I don't want to keep anybody out from saying that didn't have a voice, uh, whatever their voice is, whatever their choice is. I've had individual discussions with some of the people on this list who came to me and discussed were leading to this, and they, and they actually, their vote actually came in differently because they went back and said, you know, I think this is the way to go, and the membership didn't feel that way. That's okay. So I, I do think that if we have a deadline for the nonprofit status of June 30th, I think that we need to, you know, we're at the middle of March now. So I think we need to, I, I think there's, from what I'm hearing from feedback from people, it's, you know, is there a decision made? I think they're looking to us to just make this decision and move on. Okay. So if we make this decision, let's say we go with option two because between the ones and the twos, I think the ones right. would be okay with two. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what would happen to the threes? They either have to do it or not. Or they're a non-for-profit organization. I don't. That's that's the question mark. So. Well, I think like I think what Denez said. I, I, I think what I think what you want to do is so everybody has to be not for, not for profit. Even if I think even if we go with option two, I think right. all the minis have to be a non-for-profit, a non-profit, whatever, whatever the legal term is. Um, if, if there are people who insist on three, I mean, we can sit down with them and, and explain it one more time. And, and if they still refuse, then I say just we'll just leave them on. As long as they're not for profit, they'll, they'll go through the protocols we've instituted or what we talked about when they go through the front office, the accounts are held at, you know, well, with so the front wasn't office. Wasn't that kind of the carrot, though, to go for two so that all the minis didn't have to go for not for profit? Yeah, They'd be was. under the one big yeah. Well, so yeah. it, it, it was. It However, was. the deadline is June 30th, and we haven't made a decision. If, if you're not making that move already, I think you're going to find yourself way behind the eight ball. So I, I, if, if anybody is sitting here saying, well, we're not going to not, not for profit because right. we're hoping for this, right. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rest on that. I mean, I think it's probably likely that we're going to. But particularly, particularly the people who say, well, we want to be a three and we want to stay independent, well, I think football already is not for profit, right? Yeah, football yeah. has been so. Yeah. And so, wrestling is. And wrestling. Yeah, so, so, so they don't really have to make that move, but I mean. So if we did go with option two, do we have to have everybody then non-profit status? We, we wouldn't have to do that, so, correct? No, you wouldn't. You, because they what you could do, do their car washes what, or whatever. You, what you, you, could, you could have it under one umbrella with one number with, with a very clear, you know, number for, for the entire thing that could be utilized by all of them. I think the issue here is one thing. It's called control. It's that simple. And who wants to have that fight? So that's, I, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't, this is not a hill I'm dying on. You know that phrase, right? Because whatever vote we take, whatever I recommend, there's gonna be backlash to it. So we may want people to say, this is what we want. This is no different, by the way, than a prop two and a half override in this town, okay? Let's just call it what it is. I'm not going to make any friends with that statement, but I really don't care at this point because I've spent a lot of time on it. The issue is that a non-professional, non-profit status is required because we should not be accepting any money 
as an institution that doesn't come through that process or the process of a gift. Those are the only two things, right? Somebody can show up, I can show up and give you give the school department a $100 check and say I want it for child on free and reduced lunch. I can do that, it's a gift. But as an institution, having these independent groups out there fundraising and then non-proper pro pro status, and oh by the way, with checkbooks in people's names of them using their social security number, and you know, I have no checks and balances in place that shows that this is legitimate money, and I'm not questioning that, I'm just saying the process, to me is what needs to happen. The proposal that we put forward was to look at how people wanted to keep their individual line items. And Old Rochester was the perfect example. He then at that meeting said, one way to do it is you can have a charge. They don't have a charge, but we could have a charge into the big one. But every line item is still controlled by that individual booster club. But that things would be prioritized. They're raising six figures a year. Hull only has one booster. They're not only raising six figures a year, they're actually supporting academic field trips through their booster club for, for kids at, at, at out different elementary levels is what they've done. So to me, is it, it's the school committee is in a catch-22 situation because you're gonna tick off somebody in your vote, whatever the way we go. The compromise is option two. First and 10, wrestling, baseball, so you can control your own line item. You know, you're part of that, your, your line item is yours, you're, you have that responsibility, there's nobody taking it off the top from you. But as a group, we'd be fundraising together for the purposes of earmarking funds for fees, because the fees are ridiculous. The highest in the area right now. Yeah, I, I don't Can I ask, um, just to sort of clarify, so let's, we kind of mentioned that one of the things we would want to do with kind of the money that is collected for option two, kind of in the bigger, pool of money is to keep our fees at a certain cost. So what happens to the option three sports, for example, football or wrestling? Those sports go up and the other sports stay? Yeah, yeah you, can't, you, can't, you can't say we don't want that, but then we want the benefit. Well, and I think that, but I think that those are the clarifying points, yeah. that, that the families who potentially are going to be affected. So, um, you know, we're going to keep football at $350, but we're very luckily going to bring, you know, um, girls volleyball down to $150. That's huge. And I'm not sure if the people who are sort of the option three people are really maybe understanding that. Yeah. That if it does come to fruition, I mean, I know we're sort of talking in, well, in kind of... Deneza's example of staggering this has some uh, has some merit from the following, it has much merit, but from Lots the... Lots of merit. <laughs> <laughs> it has one great thing, and that is, I do not want to control how these organizations currently expend their money. But I do believe we have a right to know where that money is going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay? Can we clarify that, that all the money they're raising isn't going through us? It, it will. No. It can't. It can't. Not if it's, it's a... a totally no, if it's, if it's a one booster. It's, no. still, it's still an independent well, booster. Yeah. It's still yeah. an independent yeah. booster. I don't, I, don't I don't agree that the accounts would come from you guys. They so can't come I never answer that because... No. I you can't... They're, they're a registered not-for-profit like they are right so now. We're not with a different board. We're gonna, we're gonna, no, well, no, no, we can no, have protocols in place. Yeah, we can have yeah. protocols in place. The account doesn't have to rest for us. Down Correct. The well, it, there has to be a protocol because the protocol. Because otherwise, what you have is you have people going out and saying, "Hey, I represent no, Orange Schools. Yeah. I want right. to give me some money." And we have no control. The thing, the thing is, with the not-for-profits, when they register, they have to provide financials. That's the biggest thing that we're seeing. We don't know what they're spending money on. So when they provide it to us, then we'll know. But it, it's not going to go through us. We're totally okay. Separate. If the if the account does not rest with you, <coughs> will you still be in charge of looking over the line items? Who's bringing what in? Who's bringing what? Well, the, I mean, the, I can. The, I, I don't have the, to the say request, what. The, those those organizations, as not registered not for profits, are supposed to yearly file, depending on the amount of money that's so here, raised. Here's, here's, totally why, here's why. Here's why I have a real issue with that. Because I don't want, and I'm telling you, this is not inconceivable that someone in something, whether it be a parent organization or whatever, is taking money out of these things. It, it would not be overly difficult. So the protocol I'm would be... i you that. Can so, so, okay. But so the protocol... There has to be some but the pro oversight. The, the oversight is that you have a board, right, that's appointed, elected by the membership. That's going to have a president, a vice president, a treasurer, a secretary. You can have a, you can have a 
uh, a fundraiser chair, whatever the offices are. You have to have protocols in place for how money is expended and or collect, collected and or expended. Probably At least two people done. check now. The problem yeah. is that right now right. we have organizations that are not for profit yeah. registered and do take votes do. and do have paperwork and paper trails. But then we have other organizations that don't. And my concern is the don'ts are more right now than the do's. And then on top of that is what are we fundraising for? Because there are people going out there, literally, my office has received the following call. Why can't you guys pay for that team's jersey? Why are, you ask, why are they asking me money? And I say, I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean with fundraising for a jersey? You know, for a uniform. I would like to have the responsibility, since what I've been here, of saying, we have a budgetary re operational fund requirement to do certain things. We shouldn't be paying one penny out of fees and or fundraising for salaries. We shouldn't. It's an awful practice. It's an awful, let me go fundraise so that my coach can get his $2,500 stipend. Really? We have an operational obligation to that. We, may, we have an operational obligation to safety, transportation. But some of those in the area of transportation, we could use fees to offset transportation. We can use fees to offset the cost of uniforms. We can use fees to offset the cost of whatever, which is what we do now. It's a half a million dollar operating budget that collects $180,000 in fees. More this year. We'll probably over 200. Three, twenty of it comes from the operating budget. So what we're trying to say is these expenses go up three, four, five per percent. We have to do what we've done with other areas. With transportation is another example. Transportation is up 10000 do we add another $10,000 worth of fees to kids or we just keep it the same and eat it in the operating budget? We eat it in the operating budget as much as people think that we don't. Same thing with sports. So the protocols would be a brand new, organized, registered non-for-profit with proper leadership, banking accounts, registered with the uh, Attorney General's office, so on and so forth, which then follows protocols established within its rules and regulations, including that it must file with the school committee at least on a yearly basis, a line item of collections and expenses. So that's, that's your oversight. That's, that's the oversight. I would prefer it be more. I would say more than once a year. Yeah. Quarterly is fine. Quarterly, right. And we can, we can that offer that guidance. Yeah. We, we can, can offer guidance, right. Right. however they want us to be involved or not. And the protocol also has to include the athletic director and the building principal under that protocol, which is, so what should the expenditures go for? You know, okay, we're not going to have one banquet. We're going to have 75 banquets. Great. What does that look like? Where are they happening? How much are we expending on these? Are we, have we decided on a per pupil cost? Or are we saying, spend as much as you want? What kind of gifts do the seniors get? Do we finally decide that we're going to pay for all the awards ourselves, 100% out of the operating budget, because we're going to allow the boosters to do X, Y, and Z? Do we eat the custodial costs as part of operation for using our building because we're saying, please use our building and don't, don't go off site because it's more complicated. Those protocols we can put into place as part of putting this together. The financials quarterly, bi-weekly, monthly, if you want. One of our organizations, the high school parent group, always sends me their stuff. Our booths is actually, uh, uh, parent groups have been sending me their monthlies. So they have their agenda, they have their minutes, they have how much they collected, what they expended for, and how much is left, and their votes that they've taken, um, which is great. Um, we're asking these, this group to do the same. Um, or they would be doing the same. Or that we're going to have 29 independent ones that are so, doing that. So now that I think that, that, that I may have I may have mis, um, misspoken my, civil, my original proposal to you was, I think my proposal was actually um, next year you can you can join the large boosters and stay many, but, but there was no fee. I, I think you did. That's correct, what you said. That's so you what didn't you pay said. a fee in the first time. So, you, so you, you were able to utilize all your money that first year, right. and then the second year the fee started. But after that first year, people who said we don't want to join the first year couldn't join without the one year moratorium on, on enjoying any of the extra money that came in. And we haven't so, even decided, the group hasn't even decided what that fee would be. Is it 1%? Is it 5%? Yeah. Is it a one time yearly fee? Yeah, we don't know any of that yet. And it doesn't matter because we, we're going to structure it so that it goes back to the mentors. Their, their money goes right back to them. Correct. In, in, the, in the form of reduced or stabilized fees. So, what I'm going to lobby for, and I know what I'm voting on today, is I'm going to lobby on, on option two with exactly that. It's people who don't want to do it. However, I would I would say that we should make every effort possible to sit down with the ones who, who are against it and try and explain it one more time. Because I, I think the problem is that people don't 
they're misunderstanding what it's supposed to be. I, I think they think it's one thing where we're taking a bunch of money from them and, and it's going to go to somebody else, and that's not what it is. I, I think there's a misunderstanding. Okay. So yeah. part so of it too is the spending of it. So there's one governing body. If the boosters for football wants to go and buy, I don't know, cleats or socks, do they have to go through this governing body, get approved to go buy this? That's the kind of control they have now where they can just go write a check and go buy something. They don't have to go through this governing body. And I think they'll take 50000 instead of 75000 so, just to have that control. So I think, I think if, we have a, if we have kind of a, a blanket, you know, pre-approved, this type of thing, yeah. if, you want, if you want to buy a piece of the whatever the required uniform is, yeah, I'm fine. That's, you know, that, if you want to spend your money on that, that's fine. If you want to do something else, I, I don't know, if you want to give scholarships out, then, you know, maybe there's, you know, maybe there's a requirement or maybe there's a prohibition on it. I don't know, but I, th I think it's pretty, it's pretty easy to say, you know, salaries. I think our current policy is you can't pay assistant salaries or volunteers. You can't volunteers. pay volunteers uh, salaries. So, you know, there, it's, it's pretty easy to say, hey, here are like, you know, here are the 10 things that are already okay for you to use. You can, you can use your money for these 10 things, and that's okay. If you want to use your money for, uh, you know, for the expense of buying food stuffs and, and drinks to sell to try and raise more money, that's okay. That's an okay use of money. How about how they get that money? through a governing body. They, you know? but they go through the governing body. And right. How do they get but, that money? Is there they, one checkbook for the big booster? Do they have to go to someone to get that yes. check written? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. And that's, 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 that's what they, they don't want to well, but, they, but they don't need, but they, but they have that now, right? So if I'm, if I'm the, whatever, the president of, of the swimming booster, or gymnastics, uh, the gymnastics uh, boosters, and I want to, I want to get something. I don't just say, "Hey, make it happen." I have to go to the treasurer and say, "Hey, we need to issue a check for this, right?" And the treasurer says, "What do we? Oh, we have foodstuffs. Okay, that's a legitimate." Example. Oh, oh, it's old Rochester. It's, it's under five thousand um, dollars. That can be expended by, or under a thousand dollars can be expended in that process. Anything over a thousand dollars needs to go to the full board. And if you put, if you put a, you know, hey, listen, that. these are the, you know. These are the things that you don't need approval of the full board. I mean, they can structure it any way they want to structure it, right? I believe Old Rochester right. said two it's treasurers yes. and the president it's, could also did. correct right. checks as well. Right. Two and, and the so idea behind that yeah. is to make it as fluid and easy right. for that type of expenditure. Because things happen at the last minute all the time right. where you need another $100 for this or $200 for that. I mean, we know that. Um, receipt process, right? You go out, you use your own money. What's the re receipt process for reimbursement, right? I don't know what it is right now. I have no idea who's cutting checks to who. I think one organized way and should be the way we do it. It's easy. I mean, it's, it's not that hard. I think one thing you need to remember, though, is because you know we said that there was this deadline to be nonprofit by June thirtieth, kind of before we started having all of these conversations and the meetings. Yeah, sure. So you've had some boosters go out immediately and get their nonprofit status. They put money into it, time. So if, if we go to option two and say we're just going to have this one nonprofit and everyone's going to work underneath it, you know, then you've got people who went out and already, you know, put money into getting the nonprofit. How much money was it? I think, I think when I did it, it was $500 I ended up putting in. But mine was years ago. Did you guys do yours? I know you already were. Mm -hmm. But I think we also, there are organizations in, that haven't done it, right? Right, so they're waiting. That wouldn't they're need waiting. to right. if exactly. we went to options. But what about so. the ones who already right. did it? So, exactly. Right. So, um, and the waiting game is the problem right now. Right. right? And I know because I've had these discussions on the phone and via email about what's the next step. And the next step was try to collect some data, which we did. We had some folks that kept coming back to questions. We had to go out and send a second email to clarify it more because there was some confusion. We did that. Right. And or tried to do that, and these are the ones that I have in front of me, and I'll figure out if there's anybody else out there that I that I have information on that is not listed. And as you can see, it's a it's somewhat split in some ways. Option one and two kind of lead the group, if you will. Okay. Option two is beneficial because you keep your independence. Now we want to do that as individual not for profits under one umbrella fine uh, maybe it's individual because you've already registered and you've already done that i know you haven't but let's say you did then you keep it you did your work everybody else comes under that umbrella but both you know all seven tax ids work under the same governing body you could do that because the, yeah. the people who are non profit you do have to pay annual fees too yeah, potentially, you know I mean? and it right. depends on how you registered yourself. Right, I know I, I know I do. I have to pay annual fees. Right, um, it depends on how minimal. much money you raise. It's right? minimal, but still. 
Some organizations with a not-for-profit, you have to file taxes on a yearly basis, or at least file Always. the exclusion. Uh, the exclusion. I have so taxes. we'll bring we'll bring this back. Do you, yeah. do you guys so, mind me asking, what, Mr. Clubman? You cross country and track. And you guys are. Uh, can I just give you like we were originally option three, uh, but then we asked some of those clarifying questions, and then we came back and and once we got that information, we actually moved to option two. And then just from, you know, I, I've also heard from other boosters who have said we're going to live it for a year because it's a concept and it's not materialized. And then they, so that option of being able to roll in kind of, grand kind of also was, you know, might be, um, you know, important. more palatable to them. The other thing that I'm thinking just listening is that, you know, boosters are a group of people and not everybody participates in, in boosters. If I were a parent, a non-participating booster parent and I you know somebody decided to be option three and that if I was not then eligible to receive that discounted fee I as a parent would be really upset about that so for, you know for example if you decided option two and then that cluster remains option three and they aren't able to get an athletic fee at a reduced cost so I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. In theory, if there if there are three, there is nothing that can stop you from saying I'm going to start my own booster club, and I'm going to join the big one. <laughs> no, right. You really right. can. I mean, right. No, so I understand. But and maybe that would actually, you know, in option three, it might redirect their money, right? So if you have parents who are saying, well, why is this? They'll say, well, we fundraised, and here we're going to sort of offset. And I don't know if that's an option or not so, and they can so do that but potentially I, I think one of the, the biggest questions that I have is and one of the reasons why I've asked this question about the boosters which I pr pretty much didn't have to I guess but which has caused all this is how much do we collect and what do we spend it on and I want to know sport by sport and the reason why I want to know is because I'm somewhat taken back by the things that I think we're asking our boosters to do and I would like to find a way to put a plan in place that if we're going to fundraise, that money is going directly to the needs of students, period. And I believe they are, but I just don't know what that amount is. And I believe that the school committee and the superintendent's office should require that you become a registered non-for-profit status. That was part one. Part two, we had a long discussion about pay to play. That really kept me, probably the only time that I've been up at night, was pay to play and how that could really devastate my high school and enrollment and issues because the, we have parents who can't afford to go up the street to a private school like that and I don't want them to go or they go because they get scholarship or they go because they're great at a sport or whatever whatever the scenario is and I said this is not a culture that I want to be part of I want to be part of a culture where as a former high school principal where where we have and are part of our athletic program because it is part of who we are regardless if a student plays in it or not. They may just be a kid like my kid who just goes to watch it and doesn't participate, okay? But at the end of the day, what are we expending for? When we say we're raising $3,000 and we spent $2,900 of it, tell me what we spent $2,900 on it. You know, tell me that, that 10000 of it goes to custodial costs to cover banquets. Because I want to put a plan in place to not collect money from boosters to pay a salary. Or... What awards are we giving out that we should be giving out? You know, do we pay for all those awards? How do we pay for them? What money do we give? The banquets. Some banquets, I mean, all the banquets, the food is great. Don't get me wrong. That's right. Because I go to them. But the fact is, at the end of the day, clearly. clearly. <laughs> so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'll remember that later. At the end of the day, when you look, when you look at it, the dynamics of it is, you know, I, I, it bothers me that, that we have to, why the kids, do the kids pay or do the boosters offset the cost and still ask mom and dad for 25 bucks a piece? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, okay, so, so, right? And I think as a parent, I don't know if other parents feel this way, but if you have multiple children playing sports over the course of the, of the seasons, I do not need any more cookie dough. I do not need any more right. um, sweatshirts. I don't need any more sort of Norton swag stuff. <laughs> um, and it's sort of every sport, every season is, I would much prefer we to say, here, 
is my money and it's for all of the yeah. kids and one check, do, one check, well, well, or, or you have an organization that comes forward at one boosters and says we have decent fencing around the football field why don't we go out and ask for four foot signs, charge $500, put the signs up during the season, and that money goes to offset the cost of everything. Exactly. And, and the reason why you want that and to I be done is because I can't go out for Right, exactly. And, and so maybe now you're collecting $2,500 worth of signs. Guess what? It's $2,500 we didn't have. All right, so, so. Because, because we have people, I think, waiting for this decision, I guess, um, I, I would suggest we get it on I will. Rather than I will. I already and, wrote it down. And I think once once we decide, and if we do decide that option two is the right option, and, and I'm clearly a proponent of that, um, if, if there are still people who, once we approve it, if it is to, and we say, okay, this is going to be the, the deadline to vote for this, if, if people come in, you know, if, if people tell us ahead of time, I'm a three, we should sit down with them and just say, hey, we just make sure, A, you understand how this works, and, and B, possibly, is there some? Is there another concern that we don't get? Because I, I think every concern should be addressed in the option, but there's always blind spots. Well, right? So maybe we're missing something. And and if there is, tell us, and we can try and address it. If it's simply, well, we just want to stay at three, and that's that. Then, okay, I mean, more power to you. It, it's it's your own call. But, but we should certainly try and try and make sure that we're so, all on the same page. Everybody understands exactly what option two is. That you're not going to get less money. So I will schedule, I will invite the boosters. I will schedule the meeting for April 9th because that gives everybody a good a chunk of time. Joe, let's, let's, I, I think, I think we should, we should vote, see where we are, and then only, only sit down with the ones who are not on board, who are three. So we'll do that. Speak to only the ones who, who. So we'll do that at the April meeting, have a school committee vote on moving forward, and then go back and yeah, talk to those that. I would, yeah. Okay. Because, because there, I think there are people who at this point are waiting. Yeah, so. they're waiting, right. Okay. That's right, because um, I go to all these games and I cheer on my lens and I go to the banquets and the food is good. Yes, right. it is. And then, and then yes. you know, if hopefully there's a limited number of threes, I think it'll be easier to address just them, sit down in a small room and say, okay, what are your concerns? And then go from there. And we can address them. It's not, like, logically, there shouldn't be any reason not to be a, a two. But. And just make sure maybe that we kind of just reach out, even if you haven't heard back from other boosters. I know that you... We will We'll cross-check the list but, one more time to make sure that we didn't miss anything and right. that everybody's had a voice. Yeah. We will do that. And, and maybe make it an opt-out as well. Say, if we don't hear from you, you're a two. <laughs> I mean, that is what it is. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next item, school calendars. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm sure we're not going to talk about school calendars. 47 minutes. Wait, no. This is not as exciting. As you are not. <laughs> um, so before you tonight, you have a um, second read of the calendars for 2018-2019, as well as 2019-2020. As I mentioned before, they are the same um, format that we've been using the last few years, with staff returning before Labor Day for our Welcome Back Day and our Professional Development Day. Um, we were able to work with the town hall um, regarding some of the concerns we had around election days. So I believe that's not quite finalized. But Pending support of select and vote. Board of select and vote. So we are presenting you that calendar um, with you know, positive thoughts that that will be official very soon. The only other item I wanted to note is that in both years, um, actually, I'm sorry, in 2019, Good Friday falls during the vacation week, I believe. And then in 2020, it's um, the Friday. Of April, Friday, April 10th, and it will be a regular school day. Um, and both Dr. Bayetta and I will be taking a look at our attendance this year to give you a recommendation. Student and staff. Um, the only other thing that you might notice is that we typically have an early release day um, before the holiday break in December, but with um, Christmas not being until the middle of the following week where it's a regular full day on, the, on those Fridays. So um, if everything's all set, we could take a vote tonight. Um, December 2019-20 has a X with a question mark? In? Yeah, that's a little question mark. God, Mrs. Rand and I went back and forth on that one. However, with, the, with Christmas Eve being on Tuesday the 24th, my recommendation is that the 23rd were closed. Okay. So we'll take out that question mark as long as the committee's okay. It's, it seems silly to open for a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
But in 2020, 2021, we will probably have school on that day. And the Tuesday. So. Okay. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. With our school um, closed tomorrow, what is the date this year? Do you know the school's so closed tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> um, so where are we at? We are Wednesday the 20th of uh, June. It's definitely the Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. We're originally the 15th. Um, and we're now on uh, on day uh, on day three. Yes, Wednesday, June 20th. Can you clarify something for me? I sure. saw this going around, making the rounds. If there's a declared state of emergency, are schools exempt from that? No. Further? Schools must go to school for 180 days through June 1st, if any emergency okay. happened, uh, hold on, through June 30th. However, after June 1st, if you had an emergency day, so let's say a boiler went and so on, you may ask the commissioner for relief. That's the only time. The only other discussion that's up for, dis for debate is these blizzard bags idea. So those are something that uh, internally we've had some discussions about, but we're not there yet. Blizzard bags are an opportunity for students to do work at home and count the day for students, but then you still have a contractual issue with uh, everybody else. Well, there's a few different areas. Yeah, contractually, you have power, you have yeah. internet. Which right. is a ton of stuff. Shh. ton of stuff. Mrs. Winsburg was nine days without the internet, so. I know. So I really have to you all people. I can tell you it's been a wicked attitude in the office. I don't know why, but I figured out this morning. I was so excited. I had to get out of work. Yep, you were lying. She was in the office at midnight. I had no idea why. Yep. All right, Ryan, I should count the people. What's the right? Everybody count to my channel. All right, next. Item, administrative assistance. Administrative assistance met uh, with myself, uh, Link, Jen, um, to discuss uh, contract. Uh, their representation and their membership is signed off on a three-year agreement, FY19 at two and a half, uh, and an increase of uh, longevity of fifty dollars. FY20 at two percent, but there's ten days for five building level senior administrative assistance and two guidance administrative assistance. They would be working during the July 4th week, so they pick up the July 4th paid holiday. And um, FY21, 2% increase, and there's a new step 15. Right now they're 1 through 10, I believe. 10, yep. um, so this would be 1 through 10, then a 15. There's no 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's just on the 15th year at a quarter. Any questions on that? So the 2 and a quarter, 2 2 is that's in line with what the teachers are doing, right? That no, that's actually less on uh, the second. Uh, um, in FY19, the teachers are uh, at 2.25, and there's a 500 to the base. In FY20, they're at 2.5. And in FY21, there's no contract agreement because their contract okay. is up. Oh, that's right, because they're, they're off here. All right. Mm -hmm. There's a um, 1.5 this year. What's the, so, year. notionally speaking, uh, the 2019, what is that? Who or was it? Uh, 18,174. And the, the 50 longevity, how much of that is, is from that? Uh, I think it's only 750. It's all not right. much at all. I think it's 750. Yeah, I, I hate to be kind of nitpicky, just, you know, we have budget what we budget, and it, it is very tight. So, um, and then I'll just ask again because cause our money is, is super duper tight. The adding the step 15 in 2021, what do we project that's going to do to us? Uh, that's going to be uh, the increase is going to be uh, 22,297. Sorry, say so again, 22,297. 22,297. 22, 22, okay. And there it'll compound afterwards yep. in perpetuity. Okay, well, I appreciate that it's not going to absolutely destroy us, but all right, thank you. Okay. Motion to approve the contract as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You have a um, letter of uh, to sign. Uh, yeah. They've already signed the original, you have the other version. Yeah, they're signed it in there. Okay, I don't know. There's a lot of folders in there. Okay. All right, um, all right, next to the agenda item is a second reading on sections C and D. All right, it's our favorite part of the night. Um, so we met with Jim Hardy from um, the Mass Association of School, 
school committees last week and did a final read of section C and D based on the comments that we had at our last meeting. Um, so would you like me to go through those items or do you just want me to tell you that we fixed all of those suggestions? Yes, that works. Mm -hmm. we fixed all those suggestions. <laughs> but, um, and the, the most updated version of C and D are representative of those changes that we made. So unless there's any other questions, this is our second reading of section C and D and you can vote to accept Vote to accept, vote to approve. Vote to approve. Approve, but they will not go into effect until we... Until, you won't vote to vote accept until... the entire um, binder. Together. I understand a motion to vote to approve sections. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Oh, yes. right, the next part of this is reading of sections E and F. All right. So I believe... You've got two versions of E and F in your packet. So the first E and F. I did that, by the way. Yeah. I know. And I, was, I didn't I realize until I started going through. I realized that it wasn't what I was supposed to be looking at. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. That's my fault. Um, I didn't realize it until I sat down tonight. And I'm like, why do I have so many versions of this? They didn't do any of this one? So E is our support services <laughs> section. Um, so there is one that's marked up a little bit. So that was the one that we have already made, the one that starts in red. Um, so if you have any comments on section E. Jen, I was just um, interested in knowing, I saw that you had. It's not me. Okay, it's not you. I'm not So the, um, the vandalism section was taken out. Can, Can you, you just, tell me the code? Oh, I'm sorry. It is, can I, can I say this? E-C-A-C? So a lot of the, I'm going to use policies in quotes, mm -hmm. that were in this particular section were more procedural. Um, and the district also has a uh, crisis manual that we utilize. Every single staff member has a copy of this crisis manual. Um, it's kept in every single classroom. And a lot of the procedures that were in this particular section are noted uh, as where? practice yes. in okay. that school crisis manual. So for example, bomb threats, um, vandalism, um, so an intruder power. in the building. Like the, the way you execute it is in a green book. And this was kind of <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I'll be sticking notes. So um, that was why we took out a lot of those. Just um, if there was an emergency, if someone is going to grab that crisis manual versus the big binder. Well, and I was just thinking sure we sort of made, you know, sort of local news this year with all of our sort of graffiti yes right. and i this very quickly caught my attention because we had taken it out so i knew it must yes. be somewhere else yes. i just wasn't sure and you know that wasn't sort of a crisis mode situation necessarily as, as things change it's easier to go to that green binder and change them in there whereas if we wanted to change this it would it have can't. to be a whole thing okay on yes it would be so you know keep this as vague as possible and then use yeah, the other that as I, I, gotta say, I like that there was a lot of stuff struck I, I guess you're welcome way well <laughs> the, the other reason hey, you guys are so welcome you know, <laughs> the other reason um, is that we have within our crisis plan very specific protocols that we do not want published in a Absolutely. policy manual. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. you know, because we, we want to hold those things available to give us the flexibility that we need because it's it's a police matter versus a non-police matter, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the age appropriateness of the students, for example. You know, what we do with a kindergartner is going to be very different with vandalism with a 10th grader. Um, it's just going to be looked upon differently because of the age of the child. So. That's why you see a lot of the red. I mean, if it's time relief, ask them this, ask them that. I mean, yeah. what? It was, it was, it was very procedural. And we no, to it's fine. I was just wondering, because there were a lot of areas that were taken out, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that one just caught my attention. One of the ones that, uh, like for us, uh, uh, EE, it used to be EER, but the R just got slashed, is school bus transportation policy and guidelines. So what we did is we kept the policy as a statement. But everything after that is responsibility of the school committee, responsibility of the driver, responsibility of the, those are all procedural. Right. Uh, they belong somewhere else. So now that's gone from literally four pages, five pages down to one, yes. because the procedures are in our crisis plan mm -hmm. where they belong, which you've approved, by the way, uh, three years ago now. Yes. So. Okay, start it off. I was on one thing, right? Or you might be on that. Start it off. That's it. No. Yeah. Three years ago. We can always bring it back to the three years ago. Yeah. All right. Might have been the only one. Yep. All right. Uh, 
Uh, you're still uh, in section E? Yeah, I'll apologize ahead of time for uh, no. this. Um, if anybody wants to leave, I don't want to take time. So, but, uh, okay. All right, uh, in EBB, wait, let me try to that EBB. First date? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the first first um, first line, the second sentence, if an accident or sudden illness occurs, uh, we just say if, if an accident or illness or sudden illness occurs, school personnel will administer first aid. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking we should have like appropriate trained some 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 qualifier on that. Well, down below it does talk about the school or nurse or another trained person will be responsible for administering yeah, first aid. We'll get to that. I'm sorry. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> But, yeah, but if, I mean, if, if somebody slips some files in the cafeteria, is everybody supposed to hands off and not yeah, do so anything? Here's, so here's why. And so, um, and, I, and I actually do have some um, some experience with this. First aid, you don't necessarily want somebody administering first aid because they watched Grey's Anatomy last night. Like there, there are there are actually things, and, and this is, I mean, it, it, well, I joke, but there are things where you can't actually do harm <clears throat> while you think you're doing the right Correct. thing. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So. You know, somebody somebody falls down and is having a seizure. If you don't know what you're supposed to do, you can very easily do something you don't want to do. Something you're gonna you're gonna hurt the person. So, I I I, I get yeah. I mean, if somebody falls, you know, I hurt my leg. You, yeah, you definitely help them off. You know, so the protocol way. under first aid would be that if you see somebody all of a sudden who's falling, you're actually supposed to contact emergency personnel first and foremost. Yeah. Right. Your job is to actually. Literally, it's kind of, you're supposed to tell somebody uh, or yourself dial and say somebody's down there bleeding from their head and they passed out. Yeah. And, and typically what happens next is nobody's supposed to move anybody because of that protocol. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I guess we could, we could put something in here that, that says... Um, I'm okay if we don't. I'm just throwing it out there for discussion. Yeah, okay. What's the problem with this below? Because you said that that's connected it to is the It's not a problem. Okay. Uh, my, my second question is, do we have a school physician? Yes. yes. As a matter of fact, yes. starting yes. next school year, you're going to be voting on it. Because one of the things that's we haven't done as a district is, is yeah. vote <laughs> on our school <laughs> physician. Heard, who is it? Uh, good question. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> so we have another name. Out of Foxworth. Foxworth. We pay him a thousand bucks a year. Yeah. He's out of Foxworth, if I remember correctly. Okay. All right. So, so it's actually not somebody in house. It's just somebody no, it's an actual physician that our nurses can utilize for no, no, the purposes of working. No, it's not in house. No, no, it's not housed here. It, it's similar to like an EMT company. They have like a, a medical director. Okay, it's a similar situation. All right. Uh, EBC. Mm -hmm. The second paragraph: Super Superintendent will develop and maintain plans that meet the requirements of state law for preparedness. Uh, this is just kind of a, a thought, but. Given given the um, the environment right now, I think it might make some sense to include federal in that because it seems to me that that is going to be coming sooner rather than later. Well, not only that, I would probably say that uh, in terms of that requirement of state law, federal guidelines under um, under some of our grants, I think it could also be part of this. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think sticking the word federal government in here. federal and state would make yeah. sense. Uh, and in the third. Um, the third paragraph, superintendent should develop developing consultation with school nurses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, more of a question, I guess. Uh, we don't include principals in that? Is there a reason we don't include principals in no, that? No, we do. And actually, the emergency medical response plan comes from the principals. Okay, That's do we want point. to? So, yeah, so it should say uh, principals, school nurses, in consultation with principals, school nurses. Okay. Um, and then down in number okay. seven, AEDs. Yep. Uh, in the event the school possesses AEDs, the location of all available AEDs, whether the location is fixed or portable, I'm not sure what that means. AEDs are by definition portable. What's right, but they're fixed to our building, so they're yeah. on the wall. Sometimes the case so you can take off and run with the case. Other times you have to open it up, take and the machine out, right. and just take the machine. Okay, but isn't that, isn't that location still a, sp a specific location that's a fixed location? Well, that, it's, gonna be? It, it's fixed. It's fixed because everybody knows that it's here. Versus you have to go get it. Let's like say the nurses' office. The so we have hallways. Yes, with it. Okay. We have hallways that are recognized as as AED hallways. Okay, gotcha. All right. Uh, EBCD. EBCD. Emergency closings. Yeah. I know, right? That's what I said. This one's an easy one. Second line. Yeah. Uh, whether or other uh, hazardous weather or other emergencies that threaten the health, it should be or safety, not of safety. Yeah. Thank you. 
uh, ECA. Buildings and ground security. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, fourth, fourth section down. Funds and valuable records will be kept in a safe place, and uh, it should just be uh, safe and secure, not under lock and key. That sounds really homespun to me. Which one? Safe and secure. Lock and key. It's a, it's a, it's a odd phrasing for so that. So you just say you just, just safe and secure. Safe and secure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, most of them are. Oh, okay. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, ECB, maintenance of school facilities. And this is this is one. It's just a personal thing, but uh, first the first line, the fish, sufficient number of school houses. Why are we saying school oh, houses? Yeah. School houses. Yeah. It, it, it appears multiple times in the school buildings. Yeah. Okay. okay. That what words meant that. All right. Um, I really did think we got rid of this. Right? I mean, after a lot of key, it's a. Or back when the days when there were eight schoolhouses back in North, back, way back when, back in the early 20th century. All right, same page, the third line. Uh, maintenance and repair of school facilities, buildings, and sites is a direct responsibility of school committee. Of the school committee. Uh, Say the school department. Yeah, that it it shouldn't be. I don't think it should be school committee. Did that skin this rich? And not only do I not think it, but it. Uh, we didn't tell you that when you were elected. <laughs> supervision over the care and safekeeping of properties by school department will be the general responsibility of superintendent and director of facilities. So it, it actually conflicts yeah. with something prior in the. So change it to director responsible of superintendent directors. And, uh, dr and and director of facilities. Yeah. Responsibility of superintendent and. Director of Facilities. Okay. Uh, mm, I have one here, but I'll skip that one. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yep, exactly how I feel. Time out. <laughs> time out. You've been timed out. E, E, E. And it has an EE and it has an R in red. Oh, yeah, school school's transportation. transportation policy. Okay. Um, line two, I would strike also. Just make it any pupil may be required to walk distance of one mile. Um, in three, uh, why did I circle that? Well, staff is a little too general. That's what you don't let, I have staff circled, but I don't remember why. But yeah, maybe, maybe take staff out. Um, Maybe superintendent and I would say what designee. Yeah, uh, shall make whatever rules and regulations. There should be an R between regulations and deemed are deemed necessary. Good catch. Now here's so four, five, and six. Originally, I, I was thinking to start it with the two doesn't make sense because it's not a it's not a um, colon bullet point list. But I'm actually thinking that we should take all of those out. And here's, here's why. Um, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds, but these all talk about what we're going to provide for bus transportation systems. I think we should have something more akin to um, the super, superintendent may institute a transportation system beyond what is required by law as long as it is run safely, efficiently, and economically, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay. Basically, we'll leave it at that. Because I think we, we've... You know, we've had discussions about how we're running our transportation. I don't want to pigeonhole us into, hey, this is your policy and, and this is what you need to do. All right, so read it as one instead of four, five, six. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and that should essentially encompass all of that, right? Yep. Matter of fact, I, that sixth one, I'm not even sure what that sixth one means, to be honest with you. So we're saying we're, we're taking four, five, and six and yeah. instead putting in the superintendent may institute a transportation policy over the May, may the superintendent may institute a transportation system, system beyond what is required by law right. as long as it is run safely, efficiently, and economically. So it's, it shows discretion to, to run one or not. That's exactly one. what we do. We already do that. Uh, e E A E A. 
bus driver examination and training. Yeah. Yep. Uh, number four, the contractor will furnish, uh, sh should be the superintendent or is designated, I think, not the school committee. Yeah, and while you're there, the school committee will reserve the right to approve or disapprove persons employed. That is not your purview in my number. Oh, you, number mean, you know one. what? I didn't see that. Wow. So that is not the school committee's responsibility, it's the superintendent's no. responsibility. As a matter of fact, I do approve and disapprove of, of drivers. Yeah. Good thing you're there. Thank God. I know. Thank you God. know what? Can we, can we take a moment while I reread the whole thing? And make sure. <laughs> we'll be right back with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, e E A E C. Student conduct on school buses. Yeah. Um, student conduct on school buses, school committee and staff share with students and parents responsibility for student safety, blah, blah, blah. Um, we sh I think we already struck these rules. So the rules themselves were struck. The authority for enforcing school committee requirements of student conduct on buses will rest with the principals. We're, we're referring to um, we requirements that we already struck. Well, we struck them here, but they're still in the procedure manual. So they still have to be followed just because they're not listed here. But they, they're, they're, they're listed not somewhere else. But they're not our they're not our um, they're not our requirements anymore. They're they're procedurally on our yeah, side. Oh. They're not ours. So it, it's it's not a school committee policy. It, it okay. falls to you guys. Do we agree on that? So well, so I would say well, yeah, that for in order for me to follow those procedures that we've established. We're following a statement of policy that okay. you've established. So, in other words, because it's it, so now I can go. Our procedures come from our handbook, from our manual on policy, because the school committee has provided me the authority to do so. Right. It, that's what policy is. I'll let it go, but that's not what it reads. But I'll let it go. Okay. So, but so if you so, worded, I want to go so where it says the authority for enforcing school committee requirements, what if we had said said the authority for re for enforcing district requirements of student conduct on buses will rest with the principal. It's a district where you could say handbook requirements of yeah, student we, conduct. So, so what I'm what I'm saying is the authority for enforcing school committee requirements of student conduct on buses will rest with the principal. What I'm saying is the principal, superintendent, somebody else put those requirements in place. And not right. Us. So yeah, we we'll change the word done. school committee. So, and replace that with. The appropriate district. language. Right, district where you could say. But if our procedures handbook. are in our student handbook, which they are for transportation, you do vote those. If, if we want to go with school committee, okay. these are just suggestions. Okay. That's, That's fine. All. That's if fine. you want to stick with it, we'll we look at it. it. All right. Listen, next next go around, I'll put the same thing in there. Okay. Next, next time you have a quote, pick Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this hasn't been done since 2000, so I'm glad he's doing it. No, because it yeah. After reading them twice, my, oh this, my is gosh, the, this is my third or fourth read with this. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll take a moment out to say thank you to the people who did this originally. Because <laughs> it is, it's, it's a pain in the butt. It's a, it is. It's a pain in the butt. And, and honestly, we'll go 18 it years ago. Like, no, I know that you struck a lot of stuff. The I called it. I had it's, an hour phone call. Yeah. Because yes. I'll That's tell you something. I, I, I started reading the original one. Yeah. And I was looking at it, I'm like, what is this doing? Like, what is this on here? And then I was like, finally after about an hour, I realized, okay, it's not the right one. And I looked, I'm like, oh yeah, she struck all that stuff. That's why he's got more than that. <laughs> it's my punishment. <laughs> um, e E A J. Motor motor vehicle idling on school grounds. Yeah. yeah. This is mass law, I'm assuming. Correct. Yes. That would, that would, we have no purview on this one. Take it out. Is, why are we why are we just reiterating? Because the law? state law requires a policy of the school yes. committee. Oh god. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. You have been forced by law to have this policy this is, in your meeting. I, I'm literally I will tell you for the record, for the record, I'm embarrassed to have this in here. It's, oh, it's of ridiculous to have it. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, somebody was connected to somebody, that's how we got it. Actually, you know what this is? Uh, Jim told us. This is actually has nothing to do with most of us in this room because we're in a suburb. Mm -hmm. This has to do with the buses that are outside of an elementary school in the inner city yeah, of which yeah. the fumes just go right up into people's I, I apartments and condos. But it's mass law. I mean, we don't stay in there. You can't right. go faster than 55 on the road. I mean, it's, it doesn't make sense. We should. <laughs> um, uh, EFD, meal charge policy. This is my last one, by the way. Good. Of this, of this section. <laughs> 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 I knew that was a catch. Uh. Well, 
F is really short. I don't see short, any other so. <laughs> F papers, though. Keep going. I'll give you a nice one. We're ADHD's academic. I'll give you a Christmas present. I don't have any on the next one. <gasps> see? I've been looking. So, uh, in the second, in the second paragraph, <laughs> the provisions of this policy pertain uh, to regular price school meals only. Uh, it should that should be the district will provide a regular meal, not the school committee. No cooking. You don't you don't want to. You don't want to feed you an hour cooking. Yes. Could use you on some days. Yeah. Yeah. We pay twelve fifty an hour. So could use you. Uh, that's that's all I have, and I don't have anything for the second one. So okay. So um, section F is our facilities development uh, section and then that actually got smaller when we went through as well <laughs> it's hard to believe but it's only like six pages um, now it's down to three i think so so we will come back at the meeting on the 26th for a second read of sections e and f after we've made those changes and yeah a lot uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll do a first reading of g and h at the same time h is really small she is, she is huge. <laughs> um, and then I is a very large section that's all regarding instruction. J is another very large section that's all about students, um, about student policies. What's our timeline on getting the whole thing done? We should be able to get this done for the, June, the, the last June meeting if we meet, even if we just have to meet that day for the purposes of finishing and accepting it. So that way we have time to publish and get it online in the summertime so that everybody has it. That's the goal. But remember, it's, a, it's actually a three-year process, and we're, we're in year two of the process. When year one is they get all our stuff and have to change it, year two we start, year three you finish. So we could easily be going into September with it, which is okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. Anything else on that, except on us? No. <laughs> all right, uh, under the next section we have personnel. Just want to announce uh, that Mr. Tom Arrieta, a uh, music teacher who's been with us for 20 years, has formally put in his retirement. Um, so we wish Tom good health and good well, uh, good well-being uh, while he's retired. I know he's going to continue something to do with music, uh, and he's with us until the last day of school this year. And we'll talk a little bit more about our retirement staff as we get. Currently, he is the only announced retirement. Um, I also wanted to announce that we had a veteran uh, staff member who. Um, passed away, Ms. Carol Shipkin, who was with us for a number of years. Um, unfortunately, passed away um, this, uh, I believe, this Friday. Friday at, um, at the age of 61. At the age of 61. Um, and, um, how long has she been out? Um, I think she retired four or five years ago. It has to be, I don't want to, I believe it was my first year here, but I could be wrong. I believe this is the fifth year, could be the fourth year, but I believe this is my transition here that is the year that she, she, she was either the end of my first year or she transitioned and I was coming in. Mm -hmm. she, um, we used to call her the child whisperer. Oh yes. She would have a class Amazing. that would just, you know, be off the wall or whatever that day, and she would just start talking in this quiet little voice, and within three seconds they were... Like little cherubs. She was amazing. It was amazing. Very, very well respected. I've had a number of people contact the staff. It was uh, sad to hear, but happy that we were able to communicate that she had uh, asked uh, in terms of so that they could have the information because she was very, very well respected. We've had a number of parents reach out as well. So, mm -hmm. our best to her family. We have sent uh, a condolences card on behalf of the district. Okay. Any other business? I just want to take a minute to thank everyone who came out to It Takes a Community Basketball game this past Friday night. The teachers and the police, um, it was a fantastic game. Even the players were saying it was, it was, it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, the businesses who supported us. Retiring, one and all. My nickname is Bobby Knight. <laughs> the teachers did win at the buzzer. It was pretty incredible. Jerry's the clock going to hold the beat tonight. But it was a great night, and it's you know we, we raised a it was very successful. We raised a lot of money for for ten awesome. families in town who really need it. So thank you to everybody who participated. Well done to you, Michelle, and the entire group. Thank you. That it was put that nice. together. Absolutely. So it was, fun. <coughs> it was a great night. Yeah. It was well attended, um, and there was a lot of stuff going on. I know. Um, at the same time, we also had um, the loss of. Uh, of, Tim McCarthy. Uh, Tim McCarthy. Uh, yeah. Mr. McCarthy passed away at the age of 57. Uh, at Alberto's, who died very young. Alberto's well. owner since 93. Um, so the condolences to their family as well, because they've been huge connections for our boosters clubs, from parent groups to the sports to you know scholarships, you name it. Um, 
he was very giving to the district. I personally didn't know him, but I've heard really nice yeah. things about him, so yeah. condolences to him as well. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and I was there Sunday for lunch and gave respect to Tim McCarthy, and he had a heart of the size of Texas. Yes. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all.